Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'm taking you on an intro tutorial on the various types of storage devices and how they differ from each other. By the end of this video, you'll know the difference between a hard drive and a solid state drive, as well as the difference between various types of solid state drives. That means not only will you be able to select the correct storage unit for your device in terms of compatibility, but you'll also be able to select one with the desired performance that you're looking for. If you have any questions throughout this video, check the frequently asked questions below in the description first. It could save you some time getting an answer, but if you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to check those across my entire channel at least two times a day. So let's get started. Let's look at the differences in various types of storage devices. So these are the five different devices that we'll go into in this video. We'll talk about how they differ in compatibility and how they differ in performance. The first thing that we'll talk about in how they differ is what's called form factor. Maybe you've seen that or heard of that when you're looking for a storage device, you hear the term form factor. Form factor refers to the physical qualities of the drive. That would include its shape, its size, its physical dimensions. Form factor also refers to the connectors and the mounting options of the drive. So that's the two main parts of form factor, its physical size and then how it connects to the device. Going back to this picture, the hard drive and solid state drive, they have a compact form factor, 2.5 inch, that allows them to fit into small devices like laptops, game systems, things like that. As you can see here, a hard drive comes in a larger size of 3.5 inches. That would fit into large desktop computers, servers, devices like that. So the first step in knowing what device you need, you need to know the physical dimensions, part of its form factor. What physical size drive do you need? But remember, the other part of form factor is the connectivity, the mounting options and the connectivity. How does it connect to your device? So a hard drive and a solid state drive both use the SATA interface, S-A-T-A. -A. That's how they connect to your device. So those are the two main parts of these form factor, 2.5 inch SATA drive. Over here on the right, you have an M SATA drive, which basically stands for a mini SATA. So this would be a smaller compact version of this. This is smaller so it can fit into even smaller devices such as thin laptops, embedded systems, things like that. But even though it has a smaller physical form factor, so its physical dimensions are smaller, the other part of the form factor, the connectivity, is the same. It will still use the SATA interface. We'll talk more about interfaces in a minute. And then lastly, you have these two drives up top. These are more modern drives. These are an M2 NVMe and an M2 SATA. We'll go more into their size and interface options later. Okay, so now we have a good grip on what form factor is and what makes up a storage device's form factor. Let's move on to interfaces. What makes up a storage device's interface? Well, there are two main types of storage interfaces. You have SATA, S-A-T-A, -A, and then NVMe. An interface determines how data is transferred between the storage device and the system, which affects compatibility, but it also affects the speed of the data transfer. That first interface option we mentioned, SATA, S-A-T-A, these four devices use the SATA interface system. You have this 2.5 inch SATA hard drive we mentioned, this 2.5 inch SATA solid state drive, this M SATA drive or mini SATA drive, and then this M2 SATA drive. All of these use the SATA interface. Now this SATA interface, this gives what's called backwards compatibility with older versions of SATA. What backwards compatibility is, is let's say you have a newer, more modern drive like this, the M2 SATA. This is a newer, more modern version of a SATA drive. Down here in the bottom left, this 2.5 inch hard drive is a much older version of a SATA interface. But because this drive has backwards compatibility, we can replace this older drive in an older computer with this newer M2 solid state drive. It's backwards compatible. Okay, so you're probably thinking, well, that's cool. It's backwards compatible, but how do I plug in this drive to a port that's meant to accept this older drive when they're physically not the same size? 
In those cases, we would bring in an adapter. This is probably a good time in the video for me to mention a side point. If you would like any help finding a storage device for your system, I will have a link below in the description and I will have several storage sized options for each of the five storage devices that we've talked about. That way, once you find out what storage device you need for your system, you'll have a few different options of what to get. In that list, I will also include adapters like this. So these are only a couple examples of adapters for a SATA interface. There are other adapters that look quite different from this, and in some cases you may have to use more than one adapter to get an item to the right port for your device. Now I will mention that SATA interfaces are generally considered outdated. Remember I told you that an interface determines not only how data is transferred, but also the speed of the data transfer? A SATA interface does not offer the data transfer speeds that an NVMe interface does. This M2 NVMe drive offers data transfer speeds much higher than a SATA drive. That's because an NVMe interface is designed for solid state drives to handle the high speeds of PCI Express or PCIe. The SATA interface can handle speeds a max of 550 megabytes per second, whereas Gen 5 NVMe drives can handle speeds of up to 14,000 megabytes per second, which is why, again, SATA connections are generally considered out of date. Okay, so we've considered form factor. We've considered the different types of interfaces. So now let's briefly talk about the main differences between a hard drive and a solid state drive. The main difference between these two drives is how they store and retrieve data. A hard drive has a magnetic disk where data is stored, it has a motor to spin the disk, and it has an arm that writes and reads data. By comparison, a solid state drive uses NAND flash memory to store data electronically. Unlike hard drives, they have no moving parts. A hard drive's multiple moving parts is in a large way responsible for its limitation in speed. Hard drives are also less durable than solid state drives, as their moving parts make them much more susceptible to damage. If you hit your laptop, if you drop it, the moving parts can be damaged. Solid state drives are also much more energy efficient because all the energy goes into data retrieval and storage and not wasting effort moving parts. But when I mention that SATA hard drives are generally considered out of date, it's because there still is a use for them. As far as cost go, hard drives, these SATA drives, are still the cheapest way to store large amounts of data, especially if you're talking long-term storage or in any situation where the read-write speed is not that important. For example, if you wanted an external storage device to hold all of your pictures or family videos and you don't really care about the read-write speed because it's going to be long-term storage, solid-state drives are generally much more expensive than hard drives. So that would be an instance where just getting a large, slow hard drive may be the most bang for your buck. So now we'll talk about the main difference between this 2.5-inch SATA solid-state drive and this MSATA solid state drive, or mini SATA solid state drive. As mentioned before, the MSATA is designed for thin laptops, embedded systems, etc. Generally, it has the same speed as this solid state drive, and it comes in two sizes. This size on the left is by far more popular. You'll see this far more if you're working on computers regularly. Uh, this smaller one on the right is not seen very often. These MSATAs use a mini PCIe socket that's electronically compatible with the SATA interface, as mentioned earlier, but physically smaller than a standard SATA connector, another case where you would use those adapters as seen earlier. And that brings us to the M2 SATA and the M2 NVMe. How are these different from each other? They're both solid state drives, but they differ in how they connect to the motherboard as well as their performance and their interface. This one uses the SATA interface, and as mentioned earlier, that would only offer a maximum speed of 550 megabytes per second. This is a newer, more modern version of a solid state drive that uses the NVMe interface. There have been several generations of the N2 NVMe drive, and with each generation, they drastically increase speed. 
As you can see here, the Gen 3s had a maximum speed of 3,500 megabytes per second, Gen 4s were 7,000, and Gen 5s are 14,000 megabytes per second max speed. So a drastic difference in speed from a SATA interface drive. As a side point, these are the most commonly misunderstood drives with each other simply because they look so much alike. Uh, it's very common for people to not know the difference between them and to buy the wrong one when they're shopping for their computer. As a reminder, if you need help with any of these things, check out the FAQs below in the description or feel free to leave me a comment. One of the most common questions I get from my viewers about these drives is can an M2 SATA fit into an M2 NVMe port and be used in that computer? So I'll try to address that concern now. As you can see here, an M2 SATA drive has two different notches in the connector, referred to as an M key and a B key. The NVMe drive only has one notch, the M key. And it can get confusing because an M2 SATA drive with both of these notches, you can physically fit that into an NVMe port. It will physically go into the port, but it will only function if that port supports the SATA interface. A lot of laptop computers out there do support both. So you can put a SATA drive into an NVMe drive in most cases. By contrast, this NVMe drive with just one notch, the M key, this will not physically fit into a port that only supports the SATA connection with both the M key and M key notches. This will not fit into those ports. So we mentioned a little bit about the NVMe solid state drives. We mentioned a little bit about their generations and how the speed increases with each new technological advancement. Let's talk a little more about those generations. As you can see here with each generation, not only does the speed go up, but also the bandwidth goes up per lane and how much data it can transfer. Another thing is as they develop new generations of these NVMe drives, they are also backwards compatible with previous generations. Backwards compatible in this case means that you can take a newer generation drive, let's say a Gen 5, and you can install it into an older computer that was built to support Gen 3 drives. What that means is that if I take a Gen 5 solid state drive NVMe, if I take this Gen 5 drive that's capable of 14,000 megabytes per second and four gigabytes per second bandwidth, and I install that into an older computer that was built to handle Gen 3 drives, it will function and it will work, but it will only work at a max of what it can handle here. So even though the drive itself is capable of higher, plugged into an older system, it will only function at 3,500 megabytes per second, one gigabyte per second bandwidth. These solid state drives, these M2 solid state drives also come in various physical sizes. Uh, you have the 22110s, 2280s, 2260s, 42s, and 30s. What those numbers refer to are the physical size of the drive. So the 22, these first two numbers, refer to the width in millimeters of the drive. And the next two numbers refer to the length in millimeters of the drive. So this one is 80 millimeters long, 60 millimeters long. Most of the computers I work with, the common end user computers, they're going to take 2280s. Some will take 2260s and 30s, but most of them are switching over to the 2280. Again, be aware of what kind your computer takes. Many laptops will take more than one. Sometimes when you remove this drive and the screw right here that holds it down, sometimes you'll see another screw hole in the middle that takes a 2230 or a 2242. So again, be aware what size computer, what form factor your computer needs. And remember earlier how we talked about solid state drives use NAND flash memory. Instead of movable parts, they use this memory to electronically store data. Let's talk about that a bit. Let's talk about the different memory storage types. Now this graph may look a little nonsensical to some of you, um, I'm not going to deep dive too much into this. I'm just going to touch on this tech very quickly, very lightly. The, the point of me going over this is to show you why different solid state drives that look like they have the same specs, why they're so different in price. So I'm going to quickly go through this, but if you want to look into this more because you like this stuff, you can deep dive into this tech a lot more than I'm going to do here. 
So to start with, there are four main memory types in solid state drives. You have the SLC, the MLC, the TLC, and the QLC. So pros of the SLC, it's got the fastest write speed and the longest lifespan. The cons of the SLC are the high cost per gigabyte and limited storage ability. Moving on to the MLC, it's got good performance and good lifespan, so it's a little more affordable than the SLC, but it's more expensive than the other two, the TLC and, and the QLC, and it's less durable than the SLC as well. The TLC in green, that's probably the most common just due to its affordability. It's got okay speed and okay storage and okay durability. It, it, it's kind of just okay with all of those things, but it does have um, noticeably slower write speeds than the SLC and MLC. The QLC is the highest storage capacity of all four and the lowest cost per gigabyte, but it's got the slowest write speeds and shortest lifespan. So they're all made for different functions, um, depending on what you're looking for. If, if you're looking for like high-end gaming versus long-term external storage, you're going to want a, a different kind of tech, a, a different kind of memory type. And again, the reason why I quickly went over that, even though it seems like garbly gook, that's why you're going to see two different solid state drives, um, same company, same brand, same storage size, and they're drastically different in price. That's because of they probably use a different memory type. So that's why you see this. Again, it helps when shopping to know exactly what you need your solid state drive for. The only other thing that I'll cover very quickly in this video is how you can protect your M2 solid state drives. As with any other component in a computer, you may have guessed it, heat is your enemy. The object is to keep these components as cool as possible because they do tend to heat up. And since most of my viewers are using these M2 drives for their laptops, um, laptops generally have limited cooling. Unless you're talking about a large gaming system, maybe they've got some thermal pads in there, laptops don't have the best cooling. In those situations, if you want to buy a little heat sink for your solid state drive, that's not a bad idea. Below in the description in that link I told you about with all the various storage devices, uh, the adapters. I will also have a couple different options for heat sinks for these large 2280 solid state drives. The Lutang was the highest rated one for 2025, um, the best heat sink that was rated. The other heat sink I'll have on the list wasn't the best rated, but it was the most value for your money. The only other thing you could do to ensure the health of your solid state drive is not to fill it to the max. Uh, I generally say leave about 15% empty, give or take a few percentage points, but leave 15% empty on the drive so that it can read and write at its max speed. And the last thing to mention in the video, some people ask me what's the best brand solid state drive. There's a whole other video that we can do on that. Things are always changing. There's a lot of brands out there. I will say keep in mind that the larger companies, uh, Samsung, WD, um, Crucial, the large companies that own the entire production and manufacturing process of their solid state drive, they're going to generally be the better brands. Um, if they're big like that and they own the whole production process, that means they have um, quality control over every single component on the drive. They have assembly control. Uh, they can control the whole process from start to finish of you getting that solid state drive. Uh, those companies have good reputations. Uh, so generally speaking, look for large companies like that. The smaller companies, they may not have complete control over that process. They may contract out uh, to third parties to assemble or for various components. So generally speaking, those larger companies are usually better. As mentioned earlier, guys, check out the FAQs below in the description. If you had any questions, it'll save you time getting an answer. I do try to check all comments a couple times a day at least. Please remember to like and share if this was helpful. If you think it can help someone else out, feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.